Welcome to part two. Whenever I start a new project, I take a couple minutes and sit back and decide how best to structure my project. I ask a couple questions, you know, what sort of functionality do I need? How do I want to organize my project? Are there any specific design patterns that I want to follow? In this case, I've decided to go with an object-oriented approach and use the MVC design pattern, which is Model View Controller Pattern. And I've done that because I've decided this is probably going to be a medium to large application. Um, I'm going to be showing you only the basics, enough to get you started, but I'm assuming that this could be the basis for a much larger application. So I want to make sure that my code is structured in a good way that makes it easy to edit and change in the future if necessary. With this in mind, I've created the individual files that I'm going to be working with on this project. And you'll notice I have a couple different folders that's going to hold different file types. I have an includes folder, which includes uh, database.php and init.php. I have a models folder, which holds the two objects that we're going to be building today, an authorization object and a template object. I have the views folder, which holds my style.css and my login and my members view. And finally, I have a couple individual PHP files. I have a login.php, logout, members, and temp. This may seem like a lot of files for a simple login system, and in some ways, I agree. However, as I said earlier, this may be the basis for a much larger application, something that you're going to continue adding on and extending in the future, and I want to make sure and spend the right amount of time in order to get this right initially. The more time that I spend in the planning stages, the less time I have to spend later fixing issues. So um, let me talk briefly about the object-oriented approach and the MVC design pattern. Now Stefan has covered object-oriented programming in some depth with his beginner's object-oriented um, video series. And my focus with these videos is to show you a real-world object-oriented example. So I won't be going too much into the theory. Um, however, I did want to briefly cover why I've chosen object-oriented programming uh, for this particular series. Obviously, you know, I want to show you an example of real-world real world object-oriented PHP. And, I mean, that's one reason why I'm using object-oriented approach. However, in addition, what I have found is that object-oriented programming allows me to compartmentalize my code. It allows me to provide a clean and uh, clear organization to my code. I can split out individual functions into separate objects, which allows me to reuse them in the future, potentially in future projects, and also allows me to write clear, understandable code and I will be showing you what I mean as we go through these videos. In addition, I've chosen to go with the MVC or Model View Controller design pattern. Um, the goal of MVC is to reduce complexity and increase the flexibility and maintainability of web applications. For a little bit more information on that, check out tonymarston.net slash php dash mysql slash model dash view dash controller dot html and uh, this is a slightly older article but I'd highly suggest you take a look at it if you want to learn a bit more about MVC it covers a lot of the basics and um, to give you a brief overview of MVC basically the way it works is you have models views and controller files and each file type has specific responsibilities. Basically, your controllers handle input. Um, they get the input from the user. They pass that input off to the model, which does all the processing, the um, heavy lifting in the web application. And then the model passes off the resulting data to the view, which is displayed back out to the user. And um, Basically, this allows me to split up my application into individual sections um, based on the area of responsibility. and allows me to separate the application based on 
the type of code that we're dealing with, um, whether it's business logic, <clears throat> um, dealing with PHP type logic, or whether it is presentational logic, um, presenting HTML and CSS JavaScript to the user. So like I said, um, take a look at this article. It goes quite in depth into this concept and I'd highly suggest um, you would take a look at it. Um, basically, what as I was saying earlier, um, this model starts with the user. The user inputs information to the controller, who passes that information to the model, who does all the processing, and then passes the final data to the view, which displays it back out to the user. So as this article talks about, um, there are different interpretations of the MVC approach. And I'm not going to say one approach is better than another. Um, I'm simply going to show you how I work with it. And as you gain experience working with design patterns and improve your PHP knowledge, I'm sure you're going to be able to find what works best for you. The last thing that I want to do is to set up our database. So I have phpMyAdmin open, and I've created an OOP underscore login database. And I'm going to create our table, which I'm going to call users. And it's going to have three fields. I'll have an ID field, a username field, and a password field. And the ID will be an int. Username and password will st stay the same and they'll both be 32 characters. And if you scroll over, the ID is going to auto increment. Hot save. And next thing we want to do is I want to insert a test user. And the username is going to be admin. And the password we're going to set in a second. So I've opened up my text editor. Uh, excuse me. And I've opened up temp.php. And how we're going to work with passwords is we're going to use the md5 function to encrypt the passwords, which takes a string that you input into the md5 function, and it spits out a 32-character string. And um, the goal here is that we don't want to store passwords in plain text in the database, and we want to keep them reasonably secure. And by adding on a salt, an extra couple letters and numbers at the end of our password it helps keep those passwords a bit more secure. So what I've done is I have created a, the md5 function. My password is going to be admin. I've added a couple extra random numbers, letters, and characters after it. And I'm echoing it out. So I'm going to run that. And I'm just going to copy this text. Go back to Chrome and paste it in as the password. There we go. So if you browse, you'll notice we have an admin username and the password is the MD5 equivalent of admin plus a random salt. 